Unit 5, The Unknown Language Journal. In the Unknown Language Journal, or ULJ, you will establish and record your feelings and experiences as a learner and the ways in which different methods and techniques result in successful learning. This is very much an exercise in empathy, so you can relate to your learners by experiencing firsthand what aspects of the teaching and learning process can result in positive, and in some cases less positive, language learning experiences. Learning preferences. You will notice that you and your peers will all react and learn in different ways in the unknown language lessons. You may also recall how you and your classmates behave differently in lessons at school. Some were quiet, some were loud, naughty, some wanted to write things down, some wanted to say things out loud, some asked lots of questions, and some were very confident about experimenting with the language, etc. The idea of learning styles, such as auditory, visual, read, write, kinesthetic, has been largely debunked by certain scholars, and in addition, can sometimes too narrowly categorize a learner. So now, we usually refer to the ways we learn best, or more effectively, as having different learning preferences. You can take a VARK questionnaire by clicking on the website we posted on the Edmodo forum if you're interested in learning more about your own learning preferences. You can also read more about the idea of styles and or preferences in the ULJ Guidance Styles and Preferences PDF on Edmodo. It's useful to have an idea of these preferences so you can gain a better insight into why certain activities were more or less effective for you and your peers when learning the unknown language. Some may enjoy certain activities and get a lot out of them. Others may enjoy different ones. Understanding learning preferences can help explain why this is sometimes the case and is a useful point to mention in your ULJ. So for the ULJ assignment itself, during this part of the video, it would be useful to have the template of the ULJ assignment handy, as well as a sample ULJ, so you can look through it as we proceed. You can find both of these in the Resources and Samples folder on Edmodo. Before each lesson, look through the questions you are expected to answer. After the lesson, Answer the questions with the answers numbered clearly so the marker knows exactly which question you are answering. For each lesson, you will be expected to write what you felt the lesson objectives were for each lesson. The Unknown Language Tutor will normally summarize these for you at the end of the lesson, but do keep note of these as you are being taught. What were the main grammatical, functional, lexical, and phonological objectives of each lesson? Write these as you would your own lesson plans, so for learners to, or for learners to be better able to. You should provide examples in the unknown language with their English translation. See any of the samples as a reference. You should also expect to answer questions related to the Unknown Language Tutor's methods. What classroom management techniques were used, such as instructions, error correction, monitoring, encouragement, etc.? How were they used? How effective were they? How did they make you and your peers feel? What interaction patterns were used at each stage of the lesson, for example, Pair work, conveyor belts, etc. What activities and materials were used? Were they motivating, engaging, fun, colourful, etc.? 
Remember, it is not enough to merely be observational and write perfunctory descriptions about what happened and what was used. Remember to record more detailed descriptions and insights, such as the effect on the class and why you think that was the case. Refer to your notes on classroom management when answering these questions. For each lesson, you will also be asked to provide contrastive analysis between what you had learnt in the unknown language and English in terms of the grammar, for example, the difference in the word order, word endings, articles, the phonology, the difference in certain phonemes, stress, intonation, and lexis, for example, cognates, or possibly there may be words in the unknown language that cannot be translated into English. Again, refer to ULJ samples for guidance and examples. So what are cognates? Cognate words have a common origin or are related and similar in some way. We've shown you here an example of the word night in English which has been translated into a number of other languages. Notice there's slight similarities, meaning all these words had some kind of etymological origin. You may find that the unknown language shares many cognates with English. Alternatively, you may find that the unknown language is so distinct and separate from English that it may share no cognates. You might also encounter false friends, which are words in the unknown language which sound and look similar to words in English, but in actuality have very different meanings. Some examples of false friends that might appear between English and German are listed in the table above. Ensure you record your personal, individual learning experience. How did the lesson compare to your expectations and or your previous learning experience? What did you discover about yourself as a learner and your learning preferences? And what was more or less helpful for you? Ensure you also observe your peers. What did you notice about their preferences and behaviour? And how did this change over the four lessons? At the end of the four lesson write-up, you'll be asked to write a summary of no more than two sides, reflecting on the overall experience. What is your professional evaluation of this unit and of the teaching methodology used by the unknown language tutor? You'll also be asked to describe using bullet points, what you have learnt from this experience about language teaching and learning, and what you can take forward into your own teaching. What methods, behaviour, activities, games and techniques would you like to emulate in your own lessons? Why? Remember, the more insightful you are, the greater it shows you have considered the effects of what you have experienced as a learner and how you can apply what you have learnt into being a more effective teacher. So now let's talk about the process. Taking notes and writing up the ULJ. While we appreciate that during the lesson you will be taking notes on the language you are learning, also ensure you are taking notes about the learning process itself. Take note of what you think the learning objectives are and what methods, classroom management techniques, activities and games are used by the unknown language tutor and your response to them, as well as your peers' responses to them. At the end of the lesson, you will have a chance to discuss the lessons with your unknown language tutor and ask questions in English for a short time. Write up your assignment as per the timetable.
after each lesson, answer the questions with answers numbered clearly. At the end of the four lessons, complete the summary. Add a cover page. You can make this your own, so go to town with it if you want. Write your assignment single-spaced in size 12 font. Number all your pages, and don't forget to proofread your assignment before emailing it in. You will be provided with the best email address during the face-to-face -face component. If you wish to know the assessment criteria, see your course handbook. Remember, you are not being assessed on the volume of the language that you've learned, but on the accuracy of analysis and the reflective nature of the journal. So don't spend excess time on analysing the language itself. Each question is worth two marks, and there are six questions you need to answer for each ULJ lesson for a total of 48 marks. In addition, the summary is worth 15 marks, which is a fair chunk of the weighting, so do give careful consideration to this section. You're also marked on the presentation of your assignment and on using correct and appropriately academic language for a total of three marks. The maximum total is 66 marks, and so, for you high achievers out there, you need 59 marks to get an A. Before the first ULJ lesson, ensure you have given some thought to the questions on the worksheet and have jotted these down. We also recommend speaking to one or several of your peers so you can gain an understanding of their expectations and feelings about learning an unknown language. We will reveal which language you'll be learning very soon. We try to ensure it's a language that no one on your course will have studied before, putting you all in the shoes of complete beginners. We hope you enjoy and learn a lot from the ULJ experience.